So more than ever, it's crucial for us to use the relationship that we have with our partners in order to find opportunities that will benefit not only clients who are people who are clients of Beltrade, but MSMEs across the country. And I know one of the things you did not necessarily mention, but we do have the MSME support program that is another part of an access to finance that we'd like to discuss at a later date. Um, but before I go too much into that, right now we want to focus on what DFC has to offer. And with us today, we have Ms. Tara Alves and Robin Burns, who will be giving a presentation. Before they start, I just want to say that um, for those who have questions, we have SBDC unit along with Monique Usher and team who will be taking your questions. So please put them in the comments box. They'll be taking those questions and we'll be presenting them after the presentation to the speakers so that they can help us answer. If you're watching on Facebook, you can also upload your comments, your questions in the comments section, and we'll pick those up and we bring them up to the speakers and they can respond. So we'd like to give the presenters an opportunity to do their full presentation first, and after that, we ask questions. So let me start once again by introducing Ms. Robin Burns and Ms. Tara Galvez from DSC. Um, if they want to do a short introduction and then we go into the presentation. Ms. Tara? Hey, good, good afternoon. Um, I'm Tara Galvez. I'm a credit officer here at DFC. And um, my colleague, uh, Robin Burns, will also be... Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, thank Beltrade and um, the Small Business Development Center for um, inviting us and providing a, a forum for us to share what uh, DFC is, is offering at this time. And um, we are uh, grateful for the invitation to participate in the Access to Finance series. Um, we're hoping that um, through this medium, we can um, inform clients of, of the products that we currently have and, and how they can benefit from, from financing from DFC. So um, thank you once again, and let me just share this presentation. Okay, is, is everyone able to see the presentation? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned before, um, Ms. Robin Burns and myself, Tara Gal Galvez, will be uh, presenting to you um, how we can assist in meeting your, your business needs. And um, we will begin by just explaining what we will cover this afternoon. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about who we are and um, also the productive sector. Um, we will be concentrating on the productive, by productive we mean business sector. Um, so we will be concentrating on, on that today. Um, we'll advise you of, of the requirements on how to access this type of financing, um, the benefits by, you would obtain by working with us. Uh, we will share our contact information and then we'll have a question and answer um, segment where we'll, we'll welcome your, your questions and any, any clarifications that you might, you might have no, regarding the presentation. Um, so who are we? DFC is 56 years old. So we've been in the business for quite some time and it's Belize's only development bank. Um, as Belize's only development bank, we, we support financing that contributes to the growth of the economy. So, um, and it's sustainable development. That, that's what we focus on. We don't take deposits um, and we, but we do direct lending. 
to customers. Um, because we focus on the productive sectors of the economy, we don't really do consumer-based lending. And we are fully owned by, by the government of Belize. However, we do have in our board of directors, we have um, representation from various sectors. Um, so the products that we offer, we would concentrate on, on education, business, housing, agriculture, and um, more recently, we have also been promoting loans in the area of renewable energy and energy efficiency. We are also, um, we are also focusing on gender mainstreaming. So we are giving consideration for single mothers, women in business, um, I must say that we are currently working on a gender policy and once we have our gender policy in place, we will be developing more products um, that will directly, um, that will be more based on, on gender mainstreaming. Um, so once we have that in place, you know, we would have more, more products to offer. We are also concentrating on climate resiliency, and, and this speaks directly to our renewable energy loans. Um, so we, um, we are actually, um, we have a, a, a product in renewable energy for businesses that wish to lower their energy costs. And um, at the same time, um, lower em emissions, sorry, carbon emissions. So contributing to the environment and also lowering costs. And this would apply to um, residences as well as to businesses. I spoke of, of sustainability earlier because we, um, we're mainly focused on sustainable development. So we would finance projects that um, are viable and that, and that are sustainable, no? that, that are not here just for a, a year or two, but that will build the economy. Um, we do effective delivery of loan administration, and um, we also comply with the requirements for anti-money laundering. So we ensure that we have sound ba banking practices. And we also try to build relationships with um, different government agencies and the private sector. Um, we do have a uh, a collaboration with Beltrade. We have a memorandum of understanding and um, we do forward clients that need assistance, for example, in um, developing their business plans or um, if they want to take courses, short courses that would help them in the areas of finance. Um, so we do have collaborations like those. And now, Ms. my colleague will ask, will present on the different um, sectors. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. So, as you know, the DFC uh, finances different sizes of productive loans. So, we do all the MSCs as well as the extremely large industrial loans. So, on this slide, you'll notice some projects that we finance. These ones are mainly geared at agriculture. So, we're very involved in the citrus and the banana industry. Um, pineapple, I, you may note there that it says it's a non-traditional crop. Um, what we're seeing lately is that there's been quite an interest in pineapple and there's um, a few pilot projects for pineapple that are currently underway, uh, one of which the DFC has financed. So we're looking very closely at that as we feel that that's, that's currently a developing industry. Also, we still, we still are doing financing for cacao farming as well. 
so many other um, agriculture projects. And you'll notice that we do quite a bit of agriculture because um, we've had a lot of clientele for these types of productive loans. So these include livestock, uh, being cattle, uh, pigs. We do sugar cane. We work very closely with Siri in the north for the sugar cane uh, rehabilitation projects. And we also do irrigation. We finance irrigation projects. And it's not just particularly for sugar cane, but for any crop. Um, as well as if you'd want to use irrigation within the greenhouses. Um, in the recent years, there's been a lot of interest in clients who've been wanting to get financing to establish uh, vegetable crops within greenhouses due to the effects of climate change. Um, most notably, we've seen the effects of the droughts and the losses that farmers have been facing. So we're uh, working with a lot of farmers right now in terms of financing these types of projects. Um, additionally, we also finance equipment and machinery. So whether it be tractors, whether it be um, plows, bush hogs, any type of equipment that would make your business a bit more efficient, we would definitely look at financing those as well. Um, under our renewable energy and energy efficient uh, program, which Ms. Tara was mentioning earlier, we also do a lot of irrigation loans, um, whether it be large scale as the picture you're seeing in the presentation or if you just want to do a couple hoses of drip irrigation for something on a smaller scale we're able to do that as well um, so it, it basically it, it's your needs that and your project needs that we would look at and see what are the different components that you definitely need financing for so um, Ms. Tara is going to talk a little bit about how the renewable energy um, program is used within the hotel and uh, housing areas? Yes, so the renewable energy program is, is, um, is both for businesses, um, small or, or large. It's for residential as well, because we could finance um, equipment that is more energy efficient. Um, we could finance under that, that program, for example, in LED lights, if you would want to retrofit your house or your, your business space with LED lights or more efficient equipment, we can, um, we can finance that under this program. Also, if your energy costs are, um, are high for your business, um, we also finance, um, if you would want to install solar, solar power, and, um, that could also fit under under this this program and we have some pictures here of some businesses that that we have uh, financed and this includes some um, bottle uh, production in Ladyville and uh, water production bottle water production we have uh, in Orange Walk that does this. Um, um, okay, so these are not, it's, it, our financing is not limited to these types of projects. We can finance anything from um, working capital to capital investments, including e expansion if you're going to expand your business, um, whether it's a large business or a small business we can we can look into financing um, I'm sorry are you seeing the screen no we're not seeing the screen you may have to enable share screen for whatever new page that you pop up on oh, I'm so sorry. If, you, if you're sharing a new page you have to also enable share screen for that okay let me sharing sorry having a little technical difficulty here <laughs> 
no problem at all. In the meantime, if you have questions, everyone who's involved, please feel free to put your questions in the comments. We're collecting some of them already. But whatever questions you have, we will discuss after the presentation itself. Just a couple minutes while we figure this part out. Um, but as mentioned, any questions, please put them in the comments. Can you look at it now? Is, is, is it yes, visible? we can see it now. Okay, so I, I was saying that our um, lending is not just focused on, on large businesses. I mean, we can finance uh, small businesses as well. Um, and it could range for, for various uh, types. So it could be if you're expanding your business, uh, whether small or large, if you're doing additional capital investment, um, if you're dealing with agriculture and you're doing some rehabilitation or replanting works, uh, we could finance that as well. Or if um, right now we are dealing with a crisis, so we find that um, a lot of clients um, have working capital needs because the revenues are, are not coming in as, as before due to this crisis. So uh, working capital loans is, is uh, one of our products that we offer. Uh, crop loans as well, and uh, revolving lines of credit. Uh, we do refinancing if it's part of a, of a larger project. We could look at that as well. And as I was explaining earlier, our energy efficiency or renewable energy uh, product, we could also um, look into financing that as well. Now the requirements. Um, okay. To borrow from DFC, well, you would need to be Belizeans. We could lend to Belizeans, Belizean residences, residents, um, companies that are uh, Belizean owned or majority uh, Belizean shareholdings. Um, and we could also lend to non-nationals. Um, the lending to, to non-nationals, however, is um, for businesses that have been in operation for uh, at least three years and that can show that, that their operation is, is viable and uh, has been successful. No? And the, uh, normally what, what we do when we evaluate uh, requests is usually the, the five C's of credit. So we look at the repayment capacity. For businesses, uh, we, we need to see that the businesses are generating enough uh, cash flows to pay back the loan because that it's the cash flows from the business that is supposed to pay back the loan. So. That, that is very important. Also, we look at the um, management, how the business is, is being managed. Uh, so um, also the, the market, is there a sufficient market um, for the business to, to be profitable? We also look at uh, character. So uh, clients that have uh, good repayment history at, at, at DFC, um, you know, we look at that positively or not necessarily at DFC, uh, but also at other banks, if they can show that they have a good repayment history, um, that is uh, also what we consider. We consider also the contribution uh, and that could be existing contribution, what the, the borrower has contributed already to the business. Um, and the collateral, which we will go into detail a, bit, a little bit later on in the presentation, and the, uh, the conditions that uh, we can afford uh, for the loan, no? the repayment terms that we can um, offer for the loan. 
and the general submissions that we require for our loans um, would be these IDs for the borrowers, uh, if, if they're a person, social security, or passport, their proof of address, and uh, any relevant permits that they have. For example, if it's a, a small hotel who need the BTB license, uh, if it's a tour guide, their tour guide license. Um, so any, any licenses that they need to operate, it, it's something that we would, um, we would require, no? We would need a copy of those. Um, as well, if the loan is to purchase equipment or machinery, we would need to we would need invoices pro forma invoices for those equipment so we have an idea of, of the cost and the type of equipment that is being financed and uh, financial statements is, are very important because they also give us an indication on, on how healthy the, the company is or the business is um, if the borrowers have any loans elsewhere we also ask for their bank statements and if it's a company, then we would require company documents, including registration, um, memorandum, articles of association, etc. And um, a business plan definitely uh, provides a, a good um, indication as to the, the business. So it, it is required particularly for uh, startups because um, we, we need to know that the, that the business is, is not just an idea and um, it's actually you know, a, a well thought out uh, plan that has projections and can actually work. The collateral requirements, um, Ms. Ms. Burns will go over these. So we recently had some uh, changes to our policy. So if some of you have had access to, you know, some of our older brochures, you may notice that the numbers are not corresponding with what you're currently seeing on the screen. So for example, we're now able to do loans up to $20,000 that would be secured only by guarantors. Um, we, are, we also do um, mortgage. We do mortgages and charges on real estate or a combination of these. Um, recently, we've been able to assist quite a number of clients who've been unable to provide a, say for example, a piece of real estate that holds the required 133% of the loan value that they're requesting to borrow, but they're able to find a suitable guarantor. So we, we would be able to take a mortgage and the guarantor, or in some cases, um, for purchase of equipment, for example, we'd be able to take a bill of sale on the equipment along with a guarantor or along with a piece of real estate. Uh, additionally, we do debentures and floating charges, um, another collateral instruments such as hypothecation assignments, uh, insurance policies. Um, additionally, even for uh, some of the agricultural loans, we're able to take a bill of sale on livestock, which I know is, a, is relatively new. I know a lot of people haven't heard about that, but we're doing it as well. So this, I think, is one of the main areas of interest for a lot of people who are interested in working with the DFC. We always get questions in terms of what interest rates we're able to give for particular loans. Um, while we are, you know, we're, we've made it accustomed to not just throw out a number, we explain to clients that we have a range of interest rates that we usually work with. Aside from our renewable energy, our energy efficiency loans, which is a set 6% interest rate, the other areas are usually a range. So for example, micro and small enterprises run from 10 to 13%. Medium or large enterprises are from 9.75 to 13%. And the reason why we usually explain to clients that it's a range in the beginning is because we would have to assess the entire project before we're able to just assign an interest rate. We will look at uh, the five C's of credit, like um, Tara had mentioned before. We would look at the risks that are um, you know, associated with the project, how the client will be able to mitigate these risks, and as well the viability of the overall project before we could uh, assign one specific interest rate. So um, 
I think Tara mentioned earlier in the presentation, the DFC is willing to take on some additional risks. So um, that obviously comes at a cost. So you would see it play out in the interest rates. Um, but the interest rate is on the reducing balance for all loan types that the DFC um, assists with. So moving on to client contribution, um, we usually request a minimum of 15% contribution. For startups, this contribution is actually 20%. So this could be um, whether it be direct cash investment. Uh, it could be perhaps saying um, maybe for the housing loans that the client has already purchased the property, they've acquired that from their own resources and they just want to borrow the funds to construct a residence, then that would be a part of their contribution as well. So this contribution, like Tara mentioned earlier, can be new. It can be a combination of new and existing to meet that percentage requirement. Um, there are cases where we can consider financing the loan fee, the loan closing costs, or what are the legal fees, but some clients would pay that and that would also be a part of their contribution. Um, they would also have to make arrangements as to how they would pay interest during the grace period. Um, as I mentioned before, the existing developments count as a part of the client's contribution. And for new investment, um, it could also be cash or sweat equity, meaning that you know some clients would want financing for diff several different components, but they would ensure that the labor component they would you know do personally. So all of these things are considered. So now the, the, the benefits, some of the benefits that um, we offer is, uh, well, when the collateral is, is uh, real estate, we normally uh, would require property appraisals. Um, these, we do these in-house and there's no additional fee to our clients for um, conducting these appraisals. So that, that's one of the benefits. Um, we also prepare our mortgage documents in-house um, and usually the fees are, are much less than if uh, clients were to obtain um, an attorney to prepare them. So we, we handle all the, the legal uh, documentation preparation for our clients. We also offer technical support. Uh, we do have an agronomist in-house and that, that can provide advice to, to clients in the agriculture sector. We do uh, supervise credit where we, as the project is being implemented or as we are disbursing funds, uh, we monitor how those uh, funds are utilized. And um, if, if necessary, no, we offer any, any support to our clients in that area. Also, our interest rates are fairly um, stable. We, um, we don't really vary our interest rates um, much. And um, the loan repayment also is, is pretty much tailored to the business. For example, uh, businesses in the tourism sector that have um, high and, and, and low season, we can tailor the repayments of, of, of loans um, based on that high and low season. So their repayments might be lower in the slow season and higher payments in the high season. Or, or we could do also uh, quarterly payments uh, aside from the, the normal uh, monthly payments. And, and this would depend on, on the type of business and how their um, how they actually receive their, their cash flows, no? So I, I spoke a little bit earlier about, about our renewable energy uh, product. And um, as I had mentioned, this is for, for new installations or upgrading or retrofitting um, buildings. Uh, with, that would fit under this, this program. The interest rate under this program is, is at 6%. And we can lend up to 300,000 um, under this program. However, if, if the need is more, we could also look at, at financing 
Um, it might be might not be at the same six percent, but we could do a blended rate where it would still be uh, lower than our normal than the normal lending rates. Um, also, the the repayment for these types of loans are based on the uh, payback period for the investment, um, and it, it's a maximum of 22 years. But it would vary depending on the specific technology that is being um, installed, and uh, we will look at the payback period to determine that. Um, also, the, the repayment is based on the savings. I, I mentioned earlier, for example, solar. If um, a business is investing in, in solar panels to reduce energy costs, then we would uh, calculate the savings to see. Um, we would fit the repayment based on those particular savings. So there's no additional um, cash that that business would have to take out to pay for the loan. And that's pretty much um, our presentation. We have our contact numbers. We have offices um, in San Pedro, Corozal, or in Joao, Belly City, Cayo, and um, Dangriga. So those are our contact numbers as well. And you could, we also have um, website and you could email any uh, comments, concerns, or uh, inquiries regarding loans to um, info at dfcbelize.org. And now we would um, invite any questions that you, you may have. Thank you so much for that presentation, Ms. Galvez and Ms. Burns. Um, I know it was very comprehensive, but we do have our team who, was tra who are tracking um, to gather those questions that we may get in the comments and from Facebook side. So I will have Monique um, run through some of the questions that we got, and let's see if the team can answer as best as they could today. And as Sarah mentioned, you can always go to info at dfcbelize.org. I hope I got that correct, um, so that you can get additional questions answer information that you need from them. So Monique, do we have some questions? Sure, thank you very much, Nikki. Good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate you joining us in this part two of the Access to Finance series. We have some questions that were inputted in the chat bar, and I know Ms. Claudia Elena, who is the manager of the Cayo branch um, for DFC, she was responding to some of the questions in the chat box. So I know, um, Tara and Ms. Burns, we had questions um, particularly looking at startups. So I want to touch one of the questions that was asked on the Facebook, and it was area of priority for financing when it comes to micro businesses. If you can share with the general public, what are some of the areas of priority when it comes to financing micro businesses, if there's any? Well, in, in terms of, of priority, um, we look at, at basically most businesses in, 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 micro, in the micro area, um, and, and those could vary widely, I mean, from retail, trading, um, it could be uh, tour guides that have a small operation, um, so there's no uh, particular priority there we would look at, at pretty much um, once the business is, is uh, a sustainable business, we would look at it. Okay, sure. The other question was regarding the grace period. How long after borrowing the loan should we start making payments? And that was a question that was asked by um, Ms. Tanya. Okay, um, well, the grace period will vary depending on, on the particular investment that is being made. Um, and depending on the business as well, um, it could be as it could be a one month, or it could range up to up to a year, um, depending again on, on on the on the particular project. No, because some some loans require construction, so we allow um, a grace period during that construction period where only interest is, is, is due. Okay. 
And then the other question was, can small businesses that are settled at home and want to expand get a commercial space? I'm sorry, what's the question again? Um, can small businesses that are settled at home and want to expand and get a commercial space, I'm guessing this person is looking at acquiring um, property for their operation, so expanding from outside of their home to a commercial space. Yes, that, that, that's an area that, that we can look at, um, certainly, no? We, um, in, in that particular case, we would probably ask for a, a copy of the rental agreement um, and um, any other information regarding the expansion that they would need if they're purchasing equipment due to the expansion um, invoices, um, things like that. But it's some, something like that we would definitely look at. Okay. And then I have another person that said, I am interested in a working capital loan as a micro business owner. I don't have collateral such as a lot property, only machinery. Can I still qualify for a small loan less than 5000 to start build a credit history with the DFC? My business will have two years in September 2020. Okay, our, our minimum loan size is, is $5,000. Um, okay. So, I mean, we, we could look in, in terms of the collateral because we, we also can accept guarantors or, or a guarantor, no? Um, in terms of the collateral, but our minimum loan size would be $5,000. Okay. Then I have another question. It says, how long does it take on average from the time of initial application to money landing in the applicant's bank account? So I'm guessing they're asking about um, what's the time span with the disbursement of funds? Well, well to answer that, um, Monique, it, I'll have to say it varies a little bit. One of the things that um, we have to first take into consideration is whether the client has brought in all submissions because that is very critical for us to start the assessment and the loan processing. So sometimes, you know, we would have some minor setbacks because we would explain to a client that they might have some very crucial information outstanding and the longer they take to bring in, you know, that particular piece of information, that kind of delays the process. Um, so one, one of the main things that we would encourage anybody applying is that to really uh, review what the requirements are. Uh, we went through this earlier in the presentation, but I believe Tara mentioned that it can vary depending on the project type. So for example, anything regarding a, the construction of a building would definitely require, for example, a CBA approval, which you would have to have. Um, for example, if you're doing a loan related to livestock, we would maybe ask you for a letter from the Believe, Believe Livestock Producers Association confirming that you are a member and what your registered um, herd looks like. So, you know, depending on, on what your requirements are for the particular loan type and how quickly you can get together a package, then we'll be able to, once you present that to us, we'd be able to give you a clearer time frame as to how long it would take. But it, it, it would range usually between four, four to five weeks, de depending on the project again. Because, uh, you know, micro loans would probably be um, a little bit less time than that. But larger investments probably that require uh, construction, um, we would more than likely um, take a little bit more, more time now. But it, it depends a lot also on, on the type of, of project that we are looking at. There's a question. It person is asking, does the DFC offer financing for entertainment and promotion? Entertainment referring to hosting social events and concert and promotion referring to the tourism industry as it relates to promoting Belize for Belizeans, mainly doing excursions to different destinations. We finance dif different areas in, in tourism because tourism is, is one um, of the sectors that we definitely uh, prioritize. Um, I'm not sure if the entertainment is, is, is in that context, 
but um, if it is, we definitely can can look at it. No, um, a lot of uh, tourism can also be dealing with uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're dealing with entertainment that that is promoting um, our culture, that that's something that we could look at definitely. Okay. And then is it possible to get a loan for purchasing equipment for combating COVID-19 while on tour, example, use UVC lights and filter devices for cars? So I'm guessing persons interested in looking at um, establishing some protocols um, regarding COVID-19. Yes, certainly now with the uh, tourism industry is establishing new protocols for, for operation. Um, businesses will need to invest in, in, in these equipment or, or probably in, in the way they are set up. So once, um, once it, it, it's related to that, we can, we can look at financing, yes. Okay. So I have a question that came in that um, requires both of us to answer. Says so. If you don't have a guarantor, you cannot apply for the loan. Your business or bell trade, if you are a member, can act as a guarantor. Um, just like to state for the record that um, here at Bell Trade, we provide the assistance with um, developing the business plan, which might be a requirement um, by the Development Finance Corporation, but we do not provide um, or we we don't serve as a guarantor. Yes, and um, we have different options for, for collateral, but again, it depends on the loan size um, and, and the, the, the type of business. So if, uh, if the loan is um, up to 20,000, then we can accept um, guarantors. Um, if the person does not have guarantors but has real estate maybe and is willing to put that as, as collateral we could look at, at, at that as well or if the person has real estate but it's it's probably a property that is not um worth that much we, we could look at combining uh, probably maybe a bill of sale on on equipment and um and the land as well okay yeah, so a loan without um, any type of collateral, then we, we wouldn't accept that. We either would be guarantor or real estate or a combination of, of equipment and, um, and the other firms that I, I just mentioned. Okay. So I know you mentioned about your renewable energy financing instrument. Um, there's a question regarding um, acquisition of solar equipment. Um, the person wants to know if you would accept quotation from companies outside of Belize to procure um, solar equipment. Yes, uh, we do. We know we know that a lot of equip of that type of equipment really um, is sourced abroad. Mm -hmm. But what we require for those types of, of loans is that the service. Uh, provider or the supplier would also provide a, a, a report um, because we would we would need to see and the client also would need to see what what their needs are um, so that report the supplier would need to look at the, the business or or the residents um, do a walkthrough and and see uh, what really are the needs there, no, uh, what size of system um, that particular client would require, and what are the, the savings that the client can generate by installing this, this new technology. And that is important because we base the payments on, on savings. So once the, the client can provide that from the supplier abroad, then uh, we can we can look at it. Okay, thank you. We have a, in, in our website, we have a list of uh, providers, of energy service providers, we call them, but suppliers that okay. do um, these types of 
or provide um, that, that type of um, equipment. So uh, it, it's in our, our website, there's, there's a list. Uh, of course, clients don't, don't have to use any of those suppliers, you know, they could choose um, any other supplier they feel can actually um, do the job. Satisfy their need. I don't believe we have any more questions. And again, you had mentioned about the, because um, I see one last question here, I'm a small business, but would be interested in a loan of 5,000, um, the documents. So um, those information are available on your website, you mentioned? Yes, all the information that you just presented are available on our website. Ali, hola, wait a moment. My apologies, um, someone just came on. Anthony, if you can please mute your audio on your video, please. I muted him. Thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you went yeah. muted. Yes, I was saying that um, we do have uh, a list of requirements for our different products in our in our website. Um, we shared earlier in the presentation some of our general requirements, um, but depending on on the specific business, um, it, it might vary slightly. Are there any any other questions? It's a question from Miss Carla, but I was asking her to specify. Um, it wasn't too clear um, what she was inquiring about. Also, Monique, um, while you're there, I noticed on Facebook we have a question from Joycelyn. If you were able to catch that, she was asking also if a business owner applies with a very low risk profile, will this indicate a lower interest rate? Since I understand the pricing of the loan depends a lot on risk. That, that is correct. Um, we, we do a risk assessment for all our loans. So the lower the risk, the better the interest rate. Okay. Um, any other questions on that side, Monique? No, I, I'm not seeing any more questions um, in the chat box. I think we've satisfied um, all the questions there. Okay, um, also, which would apply mostly to SBDCs. We have a question that was asking, um, is this done only in Belicity asking regarding help with business plans and getting products in the international market? So Anigi was asking that question. Um, Monique, you can maybe speak on the, the part with regards to the business plan and so forth. Sure. When it comes to the services offered at SBDC Belize, which is the Small Business Development Center, um, the first part of accessing the services offered is for you to become a client. So we um, ask that you fill out our D2, which is a counseling request form, and it's you expressing interest in becoming a client of the center. Um, we have advisors that are assigned per region. We refer to it as region, but it's essentially district. So based on your location, um, we assign you an advisor that assists you with developing that business plan. An added um, bonus to the advisory service is the provision of tools. And so one of the things that we provide you is a template 
create or a sample um, business plan that you fill out and we provide you assistance in reviewing that business plan and looking at strengthening it. And then of course, based on the needs of that particular um, client business, if there's any need to do research, which um, in most instances you definitely have to take into consideration, then we provide um, support in that era. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And Anige, also, you may be interested in part three of this series that looks at financing opportunities for international mm -hmm. trade. So um, just to throw that in there. But <laughs> I also noticed, i um, not sure if we were able to answer Nas Nasri's comment on question on um, Facebook. He said, I'm looking to bring a new line of product to Belize. There is nothing like it here. Will that be a problem in terms of risk factor? So I know um, the team, Tava or Robin, can maybe help us with that? Um, I wouldn't say right off the bat that it would be a risk. I think basically we would have to go through the details of you know, what the project exactly would be and then um, to see if maybe the same client can propose some ways of mitigating any foreseen risks. Okay. Understood. So I hope that answers Nasri's question. Um, of course, we mentioned you can contact the team at DFC if you have additional questions or you want to share anything like that. Um, another Facebook question was, if a small business owner has never opened a business bank account but used their personal bank account, would this be acceptable in place of bank statements? In place of bank statements? their yes. personal it's bank account. <clears throat> yes. Um, if we know that some some businesses don't um, don't have separate records sometimes. So if, if that is the case, we can look we can look at it. Um, in fact we look at both the, the business and personal as well when we're accessing loans. So um, yes to answer the question yes we could look at that. If there's no business bank account, only a personal bank account, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so another question, I'm, I'm thinking you may have mentioned a little bit about this, but just to re reply to what Natalie was asking, if there's a priority for financing micro businesses, what are the areas of priority, sorry? Um, I we had um, looked at that, that, that question before. We don't have any particular priority when it, when it comes to micro the micro sector. Uh, we're pretty much open. Uh, it could be retail, a small retail operation, or it could be a, 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 a small manufacturing. Um, we don't really uh, prioritize in, in that area. Um, we're pretty much open to, to looking at the business proposal that, that the client submits. Okay. Um, I just want to follow back with Monique to see if there are any additional questions that came in in the chat during this time. Anything else that you would like to add? I think we covered the questions that were asked. I know the last question that I'm seeing is from Raquel. And she's asking if it's linked to linked with the COVID relief loan that Dr. Barnett was talking about. Um, that's a separate program. Um, in the introductory part, Ms. Nikki did make mention of that opportunity, but the focus um, here today is to highlight the financial products offered by the Development Finance Corporation. I also want to, to mention um, during this COVID pandemic, we have been assisting our, our existing customers um, who require probably working capital loans, um, who require moratoriums as well. Um, we have assisted our clients in, in that area. And um, I un understand, you know, that we are also looking at um, other ways to see how we can assist uh, not just our existing clients, but any new clients that have been impacted by COVID-19. So um, we might have some, some other um, um, product or, or form of assistance for, for clients uh, 
in, in, in that area. No, we're, we're looking at the possibility of, of, of having that in the, in the near future. Thank you. Okay, um, on that note, I want to officially thank DFC for taking their time today to share with us for this Access to Finance series. Um, this is part two. As mentioned, part three coming up. You wait. Let me remember Atlantic Bank. The Bank Access to Finance series happens on July 15, and that will be at 10 a.m. On this discussion, they'll be discussing financing opportunities, options and services for international trade. So that goes along the line that Anigi um, was asking just now. And other than that, we do have the MSME support program that Belgrade is also a part of. And we will be doing a special access to that program itself. So that kind of answers the questions of whether there are additional opportunities out there. In the meantime, I'd like to welcome any opportunity for last messages from DFC, anything you want to add. And I'd like to ask Monique if she can so close up with some of the opportunities from SPDC and why we should be acquired. DFC, sure. Ms. Tara? <clears throat> yes, well, um, like I said before, you know, we, um, we have not stopped lending during this time. Um, so we're, we're still open. For, for business, we're open for lending. Um, if there is any particular um, client that that needs assistance, you know, please contact us um, through our website, our different offices, because we have offices everywhere, and um, our products, the products that we offer are countrywide. So um, do let us know if there's an area where we can we can assist you. And um, also, I, I take this opportunity on, on behalf of DFC and my colleague Robin Burns for um, thanking you really for providing the opportunity for us to, to make this presentation today. Um, I know it, it, it comes at an opportune time um, because a, a lot of, of businesses are, are going through a difficult time at this time. So um, thank you once again. Of course, and we always mention how important it is to have our partners be a part of this. So thank you also for taking the time to share this opportunity with people who are not only um, members or clients of Beltrade, but Belizeans on a whole who during this time are really just looking for ways to make ends meet, um, considering, of course, the, the, so the business survival chances right now during COVID is pretty much going down until we have some type of stability. So with that, thank you so much again for being here. Monique, we're not done yet. We just have the, the last words from SVDC. Sure. Let's see um, what else is going on. So I want to thank DFC for their continued partnership um, working with us. And um, as Ms. Nikki mentioned, we are also using this as an opportunity um, to have an open invitation for those of you who joined us in today's session that are looking at accessing finance, um, a service offered here at the center is loan um, package assistance. So for those of you who are interested in accessing any of the financial products that were shared with us today, um, we invite you to visit our office or give us a call at 223-3195 and um, schedule a meeting to become a client of SPDC and opportunities such as um, today's um, presentation and others can be accessible to you as clients of the center. So thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us in the dialogue today and we look forward to continue working with um, the Development Finance Corporation and of course recruiting new clients for us here at the center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Monique. Um, thank you, team. This video will be shared on our Facebook and also Beltrade's YouTube page. So if anyone missed the beginning or some part of it, you can go and access the video there. And as we mentioned, the response for everything related to COVID is pretty urgent and we can only fix this together. So thank you all for participating and I'll see you at the next Access to Finance series on the 15th of August. Sorry, 15th of July, everyone. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you.